So let me talk just a little bit about uh, CASB DLP. CASB is really more focused on internet-based services and really uh, SaaS-based services where policies and compliance type policies can be applied uh, from a business perspective. So there are different types of use cases there, right? So, um, so for example, uh, an organization might have sanctioned applications where uh, their users can save content, right? That would be something like we do today with OneDrive and so forth. And uh, uh, CASB allows an organization to apply policy to those types of interactions with a SaaS deployment. It also allows organizations to drill deeper into content. So, for example, they could say, uh, what types of uh, PII information are users allowed to deploy into a SaaS service? Or let's look for PCI data, you know, that type of stuff. So the policies that are deployed can be very granular in nature. But that's not the limit. With CASB, organizations can also delve into any other SaaS interactions that their users have. So ignoring organizationally approved or sanctioned applications, CASB policy can also look into unsanctioned applications or what we call shadow IT, things that users are doing with their own applications and uh, organizations can apply policy to that data as well. What you'll see here in this demo is quite a few different use cases for what the CASB DLP capability provides us from a visibility perspective, uh, from the ability to block or monitor what users are doing, um, and in interface with um, with what users are attempting to do. So it's sometimes coaching a user or asking for additional authentication uh, before actions are taken. And then it also gives us the visibility into uh, trends. So like from a user behavior analytics perspective, uh, giving us um, visibility into what users are doing and uh, potentially investigate and research more. So the first use case here is just simply what visibility is provided into cloud applications. And so this is just a simple dashboard looking at the overall risk of a deployment um, and what's high risk, what's low risk, and um, you know what, what am I seeing? But if I go specifically into the cloud workflow, I can see a, um, a view of both sanctioned clouds and unsanctioned cloud activity. So from an unsanctioned perspective, we might drill in and say, this certain service has a high risk score and we might want to block our users from utilizing that service or simply log our users uh, or log that traffic if our users utilize that service. So it's full visibility on, on both sanctioned and unsanctioned sides. And there's also the ability to drill into the, the cloud knowledge database. So we might say this cloud service is a high risk. Why is it a high risk? Well, it's because of these different things, right? So it gives us full visibility into uh, cloud-based and there are, there are thousands of cloud-based applications that are identified there. So let's drill into our first use case. This is a um, user who has a document that has, uh, uh, that has credit card numbers associated with it. And this user is going to attempt to share this sensitive information in the cloud to other uh, users. The first user they attempt to share it with is a partner that uh, that is a sanctioned partner. It's on, so it's something that, that would normally be allowed. It's okay to share this information. But the second user is, uh, a, is a user in a domain that we don't identify and we don't know about uh, an individual user. So consider the first user to be a sanctioned user should get the info. The second user um, is not a sanctioned user for this, at least for this info. So the first thing we'll do here is now that we've shared this document, um, we're going to, to take a look at uh, the sharing the de sharing details of this. Initially, if you just look at it, you'll notice that both of those users are listed as uh, users that we've shared this document with. But because we've deployed a policy that says 
for certain domains, we allow this information to be shared and for others, please uh, prohibit it. Um, you'll see that uh, when we take a, another quick look at it, that one of the users has been prohibited from sharing. So now only the sanctioned user is allowed to access this document. And that was because we're deploying a cloud-based policy that prohibits this information from being shared to certain users. So what does that, this policy look like? If we look in details at this policy, it's created as a uh, DLP scan uh, in the cloud-based policy, and it's applied to our uh, application, uh, to, our, um, to our office application, and it's based on PCI data. And we have to create a, a context for this policy that we're applying. We're going to call this um, a sharing policy, right? It's all based on um, how we're going to share data in the cloud. And then the other thing that we are able to do here is create a white list of domains that we're going to allow this information to be shared to. And so we've created two domains, um, Actionable, CASB, and Finance Book. Uh, both of those are sanctioned domains. And then what's the action that we take? If it is an unsanctioned user, we remove that collaboration. And that was what we did um, in this example, where we removed that the collaboration automatically. You saw that originally. All right, let's move on to a, a second use case here where a user is attempting to um, upload information to their personal OneDrive. So what you'll see here is first the activity of the user. The user is going into their uh, personal OneDrive account and uh, once they get into OneDrive, they're going to select a document that they're going to upload to that account, or at least attempt to upload to that account. And again, we've created this policy based on sensitive information, but when the user tries to do that, not only are they blocked, but they're also coached and there's, they're, they're basically steered towards their corporate OneDrive rather than their personal OneDrive to utilize um, and, and upload information. Now, this is because we've applied a policy that says do not allow PCI uploads to personal accounts, but we would allow upload of information to an organizational uh, account. So what does this policy look like then when we uh, deploy it in the interface? We define this as um, as a PCI upload policy, right? So uh, we've we've called it uh, prevent a PCI upload to a personal account, and it's again a DLP uh, type policy. And then the first thing that we have to do is define the context for that. So this is the upload of information to an unsanctioned application. The unsanctioned application in this in this case is a personal OneDrive account. And the activity that the policy is based on is the upload of information. And we could also apply it to a download of information just for reference. But uh, in this case, we applied it to an upload. And then the content that we're scanning for is PCI data. If there's PCI data in it, prevent it from being uploaded. Right? There is, of course, other types of data that we can uh, identify the context for. Again, also for uh, the, the who, the, who or how does this apply? We're we're defining this based on users, but it could be defined, for example, based on IP address or device and so forth. So once we've identified the context, then we need to determine the action. In this case, we're going to deny the attempt to upload PCI information to a personal account, and not only that, we're going to uh, provide an, uh, a notification to the user. The next use case is uh, using Salesforce. So in this case, a user is attempting to export information from Salesforce. Now the rule that we're going to apply here is going to request or require the user to um, essentially provide another set of authentication information in order to proceed. So we're going to require that they provide additional credentials in order to proceed with a Salesforce export. So once they're notified, then they're provided access uh, to the, uh, the MFA integration. 
And once that is successfully authenticated, then they're allowed to proceed. So what does this policy look like in our CASB interface? This is a little bit unique. Uh, it, it's identified with the activity of doing a Salesforce export. So there's no content inspection type defined here, uh, but you'll see this defined as a Salesforce export here in a second. So we identify this or associate it with the Salesforce application. And the activity that we're associating it with is, is an export. And you'll see that with, with Salesforce, there are a lot of other capabilities that could be integrated here. But we're, we're triggering on just a Salesforce export based on user. We're going to allow this uh, and log it, but then also as a secondary action, we're going to request continuous authentication from uh, an MFA profile that we've defined. And then uh, one more use case here is our ability to uh, coach users on uh, downloading information. So we have an application here that has personal information uh, deployed in it, social security numbers, phone numbers, address information, and so forth. And um, a user is going to attempt to download this information or this, this document. Because of a policy that we've defined here, we're going to request additional justification from the user before they're allowed to proceed. So we will uh, allow this activity to occur, but the customer or the user is going to have to um, add additional justification before they proceed. And so once they justify their activity, then the download of the document is allowed. So just uh, one more quick reference as to how that policy is created. This looks very familiar, very similar to the other policies. It's based on a DLP scan again. And um, then we have to define the context around that. So the context here is going to be a file sharing context, the ability to download content from Office 365. So we selected the, the download activity. And you'll also notice that um, the rule template in this case is associated with uh, PII information, right? Uh, we have PCI, I think, in the past. In this case, it's uh, a PII. And we're also going to deploy this uh, for all users. <clears throat> and then the activity that we take, again, is to allow it. But in this case, our secondary action is coaching the user to identify a justification before they proceed. Couple more demos here within uh, CASB. So we have the ability to do cloud data discovery. So think about um, deployments in the cloud where we might not have had historical visibility into what's going on, but uh, maybe we need to, for example, sweep a uh, uh, box and determine what information is currently resident in in box that may not comply with our sensitive information policy so we've already created um, a a report based on that we've swept a uh, box based on certain policies of sensitive information what we've classified as sensitive information and this report then shows us what is currently residing in the organizational box account and associated with that, uh, the details of that content, so credit card numbers, uh, social security numbers, and so forth, all within that report. And then the final use case here is looking at uh, behavior analytics. So we have different ways to look at anomalous activity. One of the things we might do here is look at um, download activity by various users. So if we drill into one of these, we're going to click into this one. Uh, I believe Thomas is the user here. Um, there's been a lot of download activity by Thomas. And so we see a lot of spikes in activity. Maybe some of it is normal, maybe some of it isn't. But within our uh, user behavior analytics capability, we can look at trends. And so you see uh, the application has already identified a lot of green dots. Those green dots are what we might consider to be usual activity. The red dot is an outlier. Uh, the nice thing about this is it's a three-dimensional chart here. And so we can look at times of the day and see how the download activity is 
uh, trending through different times of the day. But then also we can look at it through days of the week. So based on weekends or uh, weekdays, how has that activity trended? And we can definitely see why that one uh, significant amount of download was a, was an outlier based on our reporting.